ask in prayer. Amen. Someone said, well, I've been a Christian for 50 years, and I've never received the baptism in the Holy Spirit. I never spoke in tongues. I, I, that, 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 well, did you ask? No, I never asked. My church taught me all that faded away. And it's not for today. It never happens. Listen, go to the Word of God. Amen. Go to the Word of God. James 4, 2 says, you do not have because you did not ask. You say, well, I'm afraid the devil's going to give me something. Let me ask you something. Who is bigger, the God or the devil? You don't even have to, you don't even have to answer that one, right? Let me tell you about Luke 11. I love this passage. If your son, if a son asks for bread from a father, would he give him a stone? Can you imagine? Daddy, I'm hungry. Oh, oh, this is about hunger and thirst, isn't it? This all of Luke 11 right here is about hunger and thirst. Because he uses three parts, three, three things that you can eat. I know y'all getting hungry, all right? Y'all had enough July 4th. You don't have to worry. Food is coming your way. If you ask for bread, will you give him a stone? If you ask for a fish, will you give him a serpent? This is the worst one. If you ask for an egg, will you give him a scorpion? Daddy, I'd like some eggs for breakfast. Yeah, here's some scorpions, son. Enjoy yourself. Who would do that? And the scripture goes on saying, if you then being evil, and I'm not telling that all believers are evil, but come on, you know we have an evil nature. Uh, if you then being evil know how to give good gifts to your children, look at Luke eleven thirteen. how much more will your Father in Heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? All you got to do is ask. I need your Spirit. I need the Holy Spirit in my life. I need the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. Number six, you need to receive the laying on of hands. Now, let me tell you, it's not absolutely necessary that this happens, right? My grandfather decided, he, you know, he, he was struggling to receive that prayer language, struggling to receive it. And he pulled his car over to the side of the road one day. He said, I'm not moving until I'm pressed all the way through. And that's the way my namesake, Bob Millsaps, received the baptism of the Holy Spirit back in the day. All right. All right, so you don't have to have the laying on of hands, all right? Uh, but however it is, one of the things that happened in the New Testament, let's look at Acts 19 and verse 6, and we're, we're not going to keep, keep you long here. Acts 19, 6 says this, when Paul placed his hands upon them, notice what happened, the Holy Spirit came on them, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied there were about 12 men in all. Paul placed his hands upon them, it was a point of contact, a point of faith, a place of encouragement how many know that the laying on of hands is supposed to be an encouragement now let me tell you i've been raised in pentecostal churches my whole life i've been around the world in different places and i have seen some nut cases tell your neighbor we're not nut cases at fountain of life we are not goofy and I, I have seen people lay their hands on someone's head and give them a good shaking like that and mess the lady's hairdo all up and all. Listen, if you're ever in any church anywhere in the world and somebody does that, just simply grab them by the hand and say, quit doing that, you're going to make me fall down. You're messing up my hair. That isn't necessary. Let me tell you, you'll, you'll, you're teaching them a good lesson. Come on. I've seen some goofy stuff. But you know something? I'm not going to throw the baby out with the bathwater. Hello, just because some people decided to get weird and decided to be odd. I'm not going to. Let me tell you something. It, it is appropriate to place your hands lightly on someone's forehead, lightly on their shoulder, lightly on their back, and pray for them. Let me tell you something. It's God's the one that's going to have to touch them with his power. Amen. I don't understand the whole thing about laying on of hands, but I do understand that it is powerful and it is real. Amen. When, when, I, when I received the baptism, in the Holy Spirit, the evangelist said this. He said, I'm going to put my hand on you and the Holy Spirit's going to come on you and you're going to speak in a language you don't know. I'm 10 years old. Wow. He put his hand on me. The very same, the very thing happened. 
the Holy Spirit came on me. I, I, I don't remember the sermon that night. I, I do remember the way it felt when I received the baptism in the Holy Spirit. I believe in the baptism in the Holy Spirit. Come on, somebody give the Lord a hand of praise. Amen. And then number seven, take a step of faith. There comes a point in time when you need to take a step of faith and begin to speak in other tongues. Now, last week, we did an in-depth study of understanding the role of speaking in tongues. I'm hoping to get that up uh, online. If you missed that, that message will be online hopefully this week. But, but, but let me tell you something. Uh, you know, I believe that the initial, hear me today, initial, tell your neighbors initial, not lasting forever, the initial physical evidence in which a person speaks in other tongues. Is that the evidence that a person's filled with the Holy Spirit? The evidence of being filled with the Holy Spirit is that you're going to have a lot of fruit in your life. You're going to be empowered by the Holy Spirit. That's, it. That's the last thing. I need to preach on that too. But let me tell you, I believe that, that the initial physical evidence is a person speaks in other tongues. Acts 2, 4 says, All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Holy Spirit enabled them. I like Acts 2 and verse number 4 in the King James Version. Do I got King James people here today? Thus saith the Lord thy God. Hallelujah. I was raised in King James, by the way. I can, I can poke a little fun at it. Amen. I got to look up all my scriptures in King James in order to find it in the New King James, all right? So, so you can't get any more King James than me, all right? I think I got a tattoo somewhere that says King James. No, I don't really. Where am I going here? I don't know. I'm getting out of control. Holy Spirit, help me, God. Okay, here we go. Like I said a few moments ago, the Holy Spirit doesn't just come on you. Here's, what, here's a good version. It says, and they were filled with the Holy Ghost, and who began, they began to speak. Who began to speak? They did. They began. They initiated it. They spoke. They began to speak in, the, as, in other tongues as what? As the... Spirit gave them utterance, the words. The Spirit gives them the words. The Spirit gives now, now, now there's a lot of people that are very intellectual, and, 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 and this is, might be difficult for some of the intellectual people because you think, why? How does all this work? You know, I don't really know how it works. All I know is you've got to take a step of faith, and you've got to stop speaking English and start speaking in another language, and at that exact moment, the Holy Spirit fills you up. You know, some are more emotional. They... They, they, you know, they, they feel things a little bit more emotional, but, but uh, I, I've often told people, listen, don't make this more complicated than it is. If the Spirit gives you the utterance, the Spirit will give you the words to speak. He might give that to you before in your mind. He might give it to you the moment you start speaking. He might, it might be like the Scripture says, out of your innermost being will flow rivers of living water. It just kind of rises up. And I, I, I've had people, I've, I've tried to talk to people, say, now, how does that work for you? What happened to you? What, what, what I try to, you know, try to talk to people. It works different for every single person. All I know is that there's an experience that the Word of God speaks about called the baptism in the Holy Spirit, whereby believers are empowered for service. I don't know about you, but I want to serve my King, Jesus Christ. I owe my everything to Him. He's my all in all. I give my allegiance to Him. He's the thing I serve in this world. Amen. Amen. And so would you stand with me? Thank you for letting me just preach a long time today.